Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. My name is Baz, and in this series we'll be going over tips and tricks for you to use within your projects. These videos will range from simply explaining sample projects that already have the mechanics set up for us, and also we'll go over custom mechanics, ones that you would find in typical games. These videos will come as needed, so please hit like, subscribe, and also click that bell button to stay up to date. In today's video, we'll be going over the ladder sample project, which contains a player object that's able to climb up and down ladders. If you don't have this project, you can find it in the samples tab, and I would suggest to name it so that when you are in the recent projects, it is easily recognizable. With that said, I'm going to click on it, and we will first go to the objects tab. And right away, we'll see the player objects open, laying out all the states that are required for climbing you will notice if you're following along that I have renamed some of the states and I've also colored differently some of the states. They made more sense to me. They're in the same position though, so you will be able to follow along by keeping the default. So before I go on explaining the key parts, it is nice to know that if you are starting a new project, you can always export this player object and then in your new project, you can import it. And then you can have this base to work with right away and you can change the animations of it with your player. And with that said, let's visualize what exactly this object is doing. I'm going to move layer two to be on the far left so that when we click object test to see what state we're in when we're doing inputs. For instance, you can see right now we're in the idle state and as I move, it goes to the move state. Then when I let go, it goes back to idle. If I press down, it'll do a idle check, checking to see if we can go down a ladder. And if I'm moving, it goes to move check now because it's doing the check while we're moving. And then you'll see that if we go up to a ladder and we press up, it goes to climb up setup and then climb up. And now that I'm stationary, I'm just in climb idle. When I go down, I climb down. And then when I go up, I can climb up. So there's three things that we need to go over here. The first thing is, is how do you know you're on a ladder? and that is going to be done by area detection. So we will go over area detection. The next thing is, is when you go up a ladder or down a ladder, you will notice, let's focus on the player down here, that if you start halfway like this and you press up, it auto snaps you into the center of the ladder. The same when you are facing down. I can be right here and press down. Oh, that's not close enough press down and it snaps me into the center of this tile. So how do we do that? We'll go over that. And then the last thing we'll do is how do you go through tiles? For instance, you can see that when you are up here, you can walk on these tiles and then you can also go through these tiles. So we will go over that as well. So I'm going to exit out of here and we will get started with area detection. And to better help us understand area detection, I've highlighted all the action states that are having an area detection check blue. You can see that we have these primary states as well as the shortcuts. They're all having some form of area detection check to see if we can go to the setup because the setups are all green. So let's click on one of these. Let's say that we're going from idle and we're just wanting to climb up. And this transition link right here you'll see that in one of the conditions, we have a switch or variable change. If we click into it, we see that it's an object self, it's an area detection variable, and we're checking to make sure it's equal to 845. So this is number we'll find out here in a second what that is referring to. First off, we can see that in our variable management, we can see that area detection is a pre-built one. It's green, it comes with every object. So we have this variable available for everything. And now if we go to tiles and we click on the ladder, we'll see that we have checked assign number to object area detection variable and that number is 845. So that's where that 845 number check is coming from. We're making sure that the player is equal to the area detection variable that we're assigning. Now, this project chose 845. It does not need to be a specific number. It could be one. As long as you are organized and ha know your system that you are creating. Now, the other things to point out with this tile is that the activation condition is when the object overlaps the tile, not when it touches a wall detection. 
That's how they can get away with not having wall detection. And you'll also see that there's no gimmick conditions or anything. It's just purely this base setting of assigning an object area detection. So let's go on for some other things about area detection. First, in scenes, for instance, the first thing that we can notice is that the ladder isn't even on the layer that the player is on. It's actually on layer three. So right off the bat, we realize that area detection, it can be sensed through layers. You do not have to be on the same layer. And if we go to animations, we'll find one more thing that applies to area detection. And that is where exactly is it detecting from? And we see that it's detecting from the center of every individual frame. We see that when you click on a frame, there's a center option. This is where it's detecting from. It's not detecting from the origin, which it looks close to where the center was placed, but it's not detecting from the origin. We had to move the center of it for it to detect. Now, luckily you can click on one and then you can shift click on the last one and you can set the center for all the frames in your animations. But just note that the area detection, uh, the center is what the area detection is looking for. And we will see that this area detection is a common check in all of these states going to the climb setups. Now you'll see that there are some other conditions as well. And these ones are rather simple to understand. For instance, the bottom of the player's tile wall, we want to make sure that it's not touching as well as being on the 845 area detection. So there'll be a little bit of exploring around, but the area detection is the big one. So moving along, once the player's area detection has been determined to be the same as the ladders, we then move on to the climb setup. And this is where the player will snap onto the ladder and be perfectly in the middle of that tile. And I have colored them all green and I have set up in their name. And there's four of them. They all do the same thing, but they're just leading to different places. So if we were to take a look at this, I'm going to pull this out and pull this one out a little bit too. And now we can see them just a little better. And what's going on with these runtime actions is they're running an equation and then at the very end they're placing the player onto the ladder. So just real quick to go over this equation because this can apply to more than just ladder snapping is they have a variable change of an object self of an X keep variable. So this is a created variable and they're equaling it to an object self X coordinate position. And that's a default variable that is keeping track of the object's x coordinate. So they're taking that value and they're putting it into x keep. The next step they're doing is they're taking the object self x keep and they are dividing it by 16. Now, this 16 because of the tile size. So if it was a 32 by 32 project, it would be 32. Now, on this next step, they're taking that x keep that has just been divided by the tile size, and they're using this operator with this value to bring that number to a whole number. Because this is pixel movement, you are going to have some decimals in your x-coordinate, and so this is going to make it to where it's a whole number. And now that you have the whole number, you can now re-times it by the tile size, and it's gonna give you a whole number of the x-coordinate you're at. Again, if you were 32 by 32, you would change this to your tile size. And then lastly, what it's doing to get in the center of that grid, they're taking the X keep and they're adding half of a tile size so that you are now placed in the, the center of the tile. So half of 16 is eight. Again, if you were on a 32 by 32, let's say it, you would put this half of that, which is 16. And then the last thing you're doing is they are taking the X coordinate position and now they are making it equal to the X keep position that we just did the equation on. So now we're stuffing this back into the X position and that is when that player snaps on to the ladder. Now you'll see that this equation is used in all of the setups. It's the exact same equation. And also, if you are interested in not snapping, you can always just skip them, for instance, 
or delete them. And when you play test, you'll see that when you go up, you can actually go up just without being in the center. All right, so that sums up about the snapping of the ladder system with this awesome equation that was provided. I'm gonna turn these back on and now we will go on to exactly how is the player able to go through the tile when he also has a wall detection on that tile. So when you transition to this down climb through tile, I think I meant climb down, there we go. You can see that its motion is using a ladder loop XX, where if you come down to the normal climb down, it's using a motion of ladder loop. So if we go to the animations, we'll see that the ladder loop has a wall detection, but the ladder loop XX does not have a wall detection. So ultimately what's happening is on the through tile state, the motion has no wall detection and it instantly goes into the climb down state, which then has your wall detection. And since they are able to even do that for just one frame, as long as that wall detection, that bottom wall detection goes past the wall detection line, then that wall detection will not apply for that direction. So we can see that is the method that they're using to get through the tiles. Now there's a whole lot of other things to go over. I didn't want to bog down with all the details. A lot of this is explorable for the most part. Um, these were just the big things that stand out that you could also apply to other things that you want to do. The last thing I'll point out is that on your climb states, you'll notice that they are ignoring direction change and they're also making it not affected by gravity and they're changing the horizontal speed. And sometimes they're changing the jump speed as well. So just note that there are some changes to the states as well as you go throughout this sample project, but I hope this helped make a lot of sense. Again, area detection, super important. The snapping equation, very important for grid, for positioning on the grid. And then just that little simple trick of how they got through the tile wall. They'll need some adjustment. It's not as fine tuned as you might want in your project. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out in the comments and we'll try to get as many ideas as we can out there. We'll see you at the next video.